Hey everyone, Cassie Draws here and welcome to today's video. One of the most important aspects of any painting, especially with wildlife portraits, is that of the eyes. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to paint these gorgeous emerald green, beautiful cat eyes using acrylic. So let's go ahead, grab our paints and let's get started. So to start off the process, we're going to go ahead and create an outline around these cat's eyes. Now you can see here that I already have a sketch that I've completed down onto my canvas. And what I wanna do at this stage is just finalize the position and the anatomy of these cat's eyes. Now what I'm using here is my small round brush. So one of the smallest ones that I have available and a color combination of Mars Black, burnt umber and titanium white together. So I've essentially made a really nice charcoal color. And the reason why I'm not using Mars Black straight out of the tube is that there are some areas in this cat's eye painting that we will cover later that I wanna add in a much darker shadow to it. For example, the pupil towards the end, the corner of the eye is much darker. So I do want to have some room to add in a darker shadow to this and not have to worry about doing any excess layering or making more work for myself. So just lighten up your color just a touch. It doesn't have to be a lot and just go around with your small round brush and really start to block in the anatomy and the shape of this eye. I know when I'm sketching a lot of times I'm really not paying attention. I have some messy wayward lines that I really just want to finalize. So essentially this is going to act as a guide for us as we continue working through this eye portrait or this eye section of the painting. It's a guide so that if we get a little crazy with our layering we don't lose where these eyes are located and all of a sudden we have an eye that's a little bit higher, an eye that's a little bit lower. So this acts as a really nice sort of baseline for the rest of this eye painting. Now, once you have your outlines completed, what I like to do, and it's a little bit extra, is just go ahead and add in the details or the texture around this cat's face and specifically in the areas surrounding the eye as well. Because yes, this video is just focused on working on the eyes themselves, but you're going to end up after you're completed the eyes, adding in some of that fur detail around it and completing your portrait. So I kind of just like to go ahead and get this step done all at once. And so I'm just going in with my large blender brush very sort of haphazardly blocking in the areas of texture, any sort of markings on this cat's face, and then of course any sort of shadow areas that I need to remember their location, I'm blocking that in as well. But essentially I just like to make sure that the canvas is not just plain white. I want to add in a little bit of an undertone to it and it just makes the portrait at this stage seem more completed and a little bit easier to see. So once that's dried, we can go ahead and add in what I like to call our initial base layer. So going back to my small round brush, I've mixed this beautiful sort of emerald color using phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of titanium white. Now this color may vary depending on your cat's eyes. So just go ahead and find a really nice middle tone color, kind of right in the middle, not too dark, not too light, and go ahead and block in those base layers. Now I'm really not worried about anything at this point other than giving myself a really nice base and foundation. I haven't even really thought about shadow or light yet. I just want to go ahead and get this color down. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a very, very light tan color surrounding this area as well. Just kind of prepping the area, those sort of under eye markings, these sort of eyebrow markings as well. I just like to block those in so I remember where these colors are. And it just, again, really helps the construction of the eye themselves. I didn't realize how important that was the area areas surrounding it to kind of really blend these two areas together. So those eyes aren't just sitting on this face, they're a part of this cat portrait. So the next step in our eye painting is we're going to want to go ahead and start to block in the many variations of colors that this cat eye has. Now I like to start with the shadow. So I always like to work from dark to light, back to front. So I'm looking at my reference and I'm choosing the deepest, darkest color that I can see and slowly starting to block in its position. Now I'm using my small round brush and I'm just going around essentially the top of the cat's eye, the sort of bottom of the pupil 
and then I'll kind of create a nice little border around this cat's eye as well and start to block in the areas that are textured and shadowed and have a really kind of cool effect to them. I call them veins. It's probably not scientific at all, but a lot of times there are these spidery looking veins in an up close picture of an eyeball, even a human eye. We have these sort of spidery looking crevices and um, sort of texture to them. So I'm blocking that in with my shadow. And then from there, I'm going to slowly start to add in different colors to my mid-tone. And in order to get a realistic eye painting, you're going to want to have multiple versions of different colors ready on your palette ready to go. And essentially every time my brush leaves this camera, I'm choosing a little bit different of a variation of color. Even if the camera doesn't pick it up quite well, I'm changing this color ever so slightly. I'm adding in some yellow. I'm adding in a little bit more blue following my reference, of course, but just lightening up certain areas and adding in different tones and variations. And just by doing this in itself, even at this stage here, we're not even close to being completed, but even at this stage here, you can really see that adding in those like really slight shifts makes a huge, huge difference. So once those layers have dried, we can go ahead now and start working on the highlights within this cat eye. Now, following the exact same principles and techniques for the shadow in the midtone, I'm going to apply the exact same things to the highlights. So I'm looking at my reference and I'm finding a really nice highlighted color that works well and matches as best as possible. Of course, we're not computers. We're not going to be able to match it exactly. So I've opted for a really beautiful minty green color. This reminds me of mint chocolate of ice cream and I'm just going ahead and blocking in all the areas of highlights that I can see. Now you can see here that I've added in a lot of titanium white, but there is a little side note that I did want to talk about, and that is making sure that your highlight is mixed with another color. Later in this eye painting, we're going to add a catch light, which normally will be very, very titanium white. And I don't want to compete with that color. I want that catch light to stand alone. So when I am highlighting, I'm making sure that I'm always mixing in a secondary color to my titanium white. For example, I added in some blue. I'm now adding in a nice soft yellow. So it is a highlight and it is very highlighted. It's making the eye lighter, but I don't want it to compete and be just titanium white. So always make sure you add in a nice color, a little secondary color, a little bit of a, a flavor to it, and just go ahead and find all those areas of highlights and highlight where needed. So the next step, once that layer has dried, is we can go ahead and finalize and tidy up the outline around this eye a little bit further. So you can see my initial base colors with this sort of translucent wash definitely covered over my initial sketch. So I do just wanna make sure that it is finalized and nice and clean and tidy before I progress any further. So I'm using my small round brush and my color combination of Mars Black, Burnt Umber, and a little bit of Titanium White. In some areas at this stage as well, I'm using a little bit more Mars Black to darken some areas. So kind of in the corner of that eye, you can see that I've added in a little bit more Mars Black. So just following my reference, tidying things up a little bit. Sometimes I find with the cat's pupils, um, sometimes I make them too thin in my sketch. So I can kind of look at my reference, look at what I have done so far. And if I need to make them a little bit thicker, I need to round them out a little bit more, I can do that as well. So basically at this stage, it is a tidy up phase. Just making sure that before I progress any further, that this is done, completed, and I like the way that it looks. So the next step in our eye painting is arguably the most important in my opinion, and that is what I like to call the glaze phase. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my small blender brush and I've mixed the color of Mars Black and water together to create a really soft shadow glaze. And I'm essentially going around this entire eyeball, blocking in and sort of buffing in this shadow where I think they need a little bit more of a depth to it, a little bit more of a softness, or the area just didn't get as dark as I wanted. And this reference that I was working with and this cat had really sort of heavily shadowed eyes at the top um, and kind of in towards the center. So I wanted to make sure that I got that looking accurate and the lighting correct. So I just buffed in this really beautiful glaze on top, um, which by the way, if you have not used a blender brush for glazing, I definitely recommend. The link is in the description box for the blender that I'm using, but it has absolutely changed the way 
that I paint. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, but anyways, I digress. Once that glaze has been um, put onto the eye and has dried, I'm going in over top with a little bit more of my highlight and a little bit of my mid-tone. And I'm blocking in areas that I think the blender may have covered over a little bit too much. So I basically do blender, highlight, mid-tone, blender, highlight, mid-tone. And I kind of work back and forth to get the depth and the look that I'm going for and get it looking correct into the reference. So the last step in this eye painting is to go ahead and get the catch light dropped in. Now the catch light is also arguably one of the most important aspects in my opinion, as it brings a lot of life to your portrait. Up until this point, these eyes have been a little bit lifeless, just kind of flat and very basic. So by adding in this beautiful catch light, we can really define the shape and the look of this eye. Now keep in mind, some of the catch lights might be more on the square side. Some of them might be circular. You can even sometimes see eyelashes or reflections reflections in your catch light. So just keep that in mind as you're adding yours into this cat portrait. Really take a look at your reference and see exactly what are you seeing within that catch light and block it in accordingly. So the last step in our painting is we're going to go ahead and finish the canvas left hand side eye just as we did with the canvas right. I'm basically rinse and repeating the exact same steps, tips, tricks, processes, however you want to describe it. I'm essentially repeating the exact same steps. However, I am changing some of the colors and the lightness and darkness as well. So depending on your reference for mine, for example, you can see the canvas left hand side eye is much darker than the canvas right. So I knew that I had to darken my colors by about 30, 40, 50% even in some areas to achieve the look that I was going for. Now, as the artist, you have full control. So if you wanted this to be a front facing, well lit portrait where the eyes are the same, you're just going to want to rewind this and watch the exact same process, but flip it to that canvas left. Or if you're following your reference and notice that your eye, the second eye is a little bit lighter or darker, you're going to want to add in either some titanium white, Mars black, burnt umber to darken those colors up. A great way to do this also by avoiding color mixing if you're not a big fan is to go ahead and actually use a much darker glaze and just build up the layers of this glaze to make the shadow and the sort of strength and intensity that you're looking for. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and slowly start to block in the base layers surrounding the eye and I will go ahead and finish those off off camera as this is just the eye today, but you can see kind of the next steps in this process and how I go about finalizing the eye and finishing this painting. All right, and there you have it. There is the finished painting as well as those beautiful emerald eyes completed. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. And of course, a big shout out to our channel sponsors, Charpak, Grumbacker, and Malatel for sponsoring today's video, as well as sponsoring my content here on YouTube and on Twitch. Their links can be found in the description box below, as well as places to purchase their products for your own art toolkit. Of course, as always, a big shout out to our VIP Kofi members of the month. Thank you so much for your continued support. You can check out our membership tiers over on Kofi.com slash Cassie Draws for more information. And last but not least, a big thank you and shout out to you for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when I upload next or the subscribe button to join our YouTube family. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next video.